great to have you back. Congratulations. Oh, thank you, and thanks for having me. It was a uh, yeah, really special time, and when you watch a package like that, it brings that emotion back. It, um, you know, footy takes you to some, some places that you don't think you're ever going to go, mm -hmm. and then you learn and reflect, and, you know, I'm just incredibly proud of our players. You know, it, uh, it was a journey with a group of players over a long period of time, so, um, you know, it all starts again. And Michael Voss, welcome to Coaches Night. Good to be here. It's a lot of different reasons in this chair, isn't it, Robbo? <laughs> it's, uh... it's great to have you. When you listen to a, a man talk about the pressures and losing himself and finding himself again, tell me if I'm t talking wrongly here, but the pressure that the game puts on you as a coach, you've experienced it before. Are you ready? Do you think you're ready? I, I'm sure you think you're ready. How can you ready yourself for what's coming? I don't think you're ever fully ready. Um, you know, through those experiences, you learn a lot about yourself. Um, you know, uh, I guess uh, Goody's had his journey, I've had mine. You, you go about that self-discovery about what works for you and what, what doesn't. And, and then you come to a place where you feel a hell of a lot more comfortable about what you believe in and what you think works. And what I, what I was really taken from um, Melbourne last year was, um, you know, the language that came out of that club around the team and what they were doing it for and the purpose that they played for was really strong. And um, clearly it was led by this, uh, by this man here and got the ultimate reward in the end. Gordy, part of the development of yourself and growing and you've spoken about your life a couple of times and, you know, you've had to pick yourself up off the canvas like you have a couple of times as well, Vossi. The events at the start of last year that were written up in the Herald Sun, was that a really big development phase for, for you, the person, or was it water off the duck's back? And can you be honest, what was it like through that period when you knew that people were questioning you as a person and your character? Yeah, I think it was frustrating and disappointing because you know who you are, the people around you know who you are, and you know the journey that you've been on in life. And I think you can see from the support that the club's given Kate Roffey, the players and, and my family and friends that the truth lies in there and um, I'm really proud of who I've become and the journey that I've been on and it is frustrating and disappointing that it's then played out in a public space but I think that's sometimes the industry we're in and um, you know you work your way through that pretty quickly but my energy is purely focused on this team, this club, these players, I love them. Um, and it's not going to be focused into those sort of areas that, that don't really mean much to me anymore. I would imagine when one of your players, guys, is under that sort of spotlight, actually the, the club puts their arm around him at that, at that time. You've all had players who have, you know, stepped, stepped on landmines and stages through their career and you, you've got to sort of put their arm around. Did you experience that tremendous warmth of, of a football club which can, uh, only football clubs can do. Oh, it's incredibly humbling, you know, to have Max Gorn um, and a range of leaders just tap in and support you the way they have. Um, Kate Roffey and, and the board, um, as I said, I think the truth flies in there and they know me. They know what I'm about and they know the connection that I have with them and, um, as I said, it's very humbling to get that support. So the politics of Melbourne at the time I actually think is probably more interesting. <coughs> Did you feel at any stage in February last year that you were at risk that you would be stood down from the job? Oh, there's no doubt there was pressure was building. Like any coach that hasn't played finals for a couple of years, that pressure starts to build. But, um, you know, the politics are the politics. They play out the way they want to play out. My focus was purely on getting the team prepared, getting them ready, and focusing my energies on the things that really matter. And the, the things that matter were the things that started to come out on field. And um, as I said, that's the proof was really in the pudding. How did it sit with you that the club had a six-figure settlement with the doctor? and then we've subsequently read. Do you believe your conduct towards the doctor was in the category of bullying? Oh, I think the allegations are the allegations. I think the disappointing thing about the whole thing playing out publicly is that it hasn't been told from, a, from my perspective and it's never going to be told from my perspective. So Why not, um, Why not Goody? Well, it's just the way that, that this whole industry works and the corporate world works. So in the end, the people around me, the staff that I work with know who I am, what I'm about and how I go about conducting my business and um, you know, I make no apologies. We, we produce a high performance industry and a high performance environment and um, you know, it's one of care, it's one of safety and one that we really value. Just one last one for me before we, before we move on. Do you know who leaked that information? And if you did know, would you confront that person? Six months earlier you brought a flag to a club that hasn't won a flag since 1964 <coughs> and then it was decided that that stuff was going to be made public. 
Do you know who did and have you spoken to that person? I think you'd probably have more idea. Well, they're working at the Herald Sun, but that's not up for me. I probably feel disappointed and sorry for the people that are prepared to go down that path because, you know, it's a, it's a piece of information, a very uh, specific piece of information with not the full context. So, um, as I say, you know more than me about who leaked it. You know, I probably feel a little bit sorry for the people that go down that path, but I'm really comfortable with where my energy sits and where it's going for this footy club. When you coach a flag and then you know, they all go off and you've got to prepare again, is it a different kind of coaching mentally? I mean, you've got to get them fit and game plans and stuff, but being the hunter, which is a cliche in football, but becoming the hunted, is there a, did you have to learn to coach that sort of mindset with the players? I think you, you want expectation, you want pressure, you want scrutiny because it means your club's in a good position. But the first thing that we needed to do after winning the grand final was to come back physically ready to, for the demands of the game. That's number one for us as a footy club and that's been the biggest focus for us because if we're physically ready for what's coming, we'll mentally be able to handle that expectation. So that's been a big part of our development through the summer. We've refined how we want to play, but, you know, come Wednesday night, we'll be ready. Well, that was the big development the year before. You said we weren't physically ready mm. to be playing finals football. So you're, you're very happy with how they've come back and how they're ready physically to go into a, a defending premiership team? Yes. You know, as I said, you learn as you go through your coaching journey and coming from 218 to 219, that was one of our great learnings yeah. is making sure our squad was ready for that expectation and... I feel our group's embraced that. They've come back physically prepared, led by our leaders who have done an amazing job in our high-performance team to get them to a position where you know, we get another crack at it, another assault at a full season of footy. Is it different, Michael, once you're the champs? You'd like to think it stays somewhat the same. In some ways, it's actually really clearer. Um, distinctly remember coming back from the first pre-season and um, it was more about just turning up physically to get the work done, um, knowing that the mental side of it and the attitude will, will, will sort of come with it. Um, uh, you, you're clear on your game plan and then you go from there. So um, they're, they're more than well prepared um, for what's ahead of them, no doubt. It's not about you, but every Carlton supporter out there, Vossi, is looking at you as a leader and as a captain. And we all know what sort of player you were. But people are looking at this football club for a long, long time saying, if I can be really blunt, when are they going to get some backbone in this football club? How confident are you and your team, but led by you, can deliver those intangibles that they, this club didn't have and they found? How confident are you that you might be able to instill those sort of same, uh, that same edge? Well, we certainly feel like we've had a fantastic preparation, that's for sure. Um, it's probably a bit more difficult for us to talk about expectations about where we need to finish um, when we're almost at the start when it comes to about earning respect. and. Um, we've, got a, we've got a fair bit of work to be done. Um, I guess if I just go off what my eyes have seen, um, is a playing group that's turned up really fit, healthy. Um, they've had an appetite to learn, get better, um, and they've been, had an all-in attitude with the way they've gone about things. So, and that's how I'll view them um, from this moment forward. I'm not worried about what has been done here in the past and how they've played and what positions they've had. I'm, I'm more concerned about what they play like moving forward and how they've been and um, I can't fault their preparation. It's put us in a good spot. doesn't guarantee us anything, but um, it certainly gives us a very good chance. At round 10, how do you want the competition to view Carlton? What's the one area or the couple of areas when we say, right, we can see that, we can see that. You might not be winning games and it doesn't it matters if you play finals or not, I don't know. But what, do you, what, do you, what are we going to see in well, the Blues? I think, that, I think the very first thing that we need to try to establish, that's the question being asked, is that we have to establish some consistency. And that's essentially we have to earn respect first and foremost. Um, you know, one of the great attributes that Melbourne had talked about last year was this, one, this ability to be able to play for one another um, rather than with one another. And, uh, and, and that's a really... There's a lot of time that can go with that and there's a lot of development and working out about yourself and where you are as an individual and, and how you can invest yourself. But uh, we've spent a lot of time on that. So I guess if you're asking me around what does round 10 look like, I'd, I'd like to think they're looking back and sort of saying that that team plays for one another and they play with a really strong spirit. And, and if we do that, then I know we'll bring the effort and intensity required to be able to, to play some consistent football. As you know, for the Herald Sun pre-season magazine, I spoke to you and Ken Hinckley, who you spent eight years at Port Adelaide, and Lee Matthews, who was coaching you at the Brisbane Lions, and the term was off the canvas. You know, your broken leg and you got back up and become a three-time premiership captain, sacked by your football club and you're back off the canvas. 
What, what have you What have you learnt in the last eight years, Vossi? That looking back at Brisbane and saying, "Oh God, what 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 didn't I know then, and what do I know now?" Mm. Uh, that's an impossible measurement. Um, so that's how big the question. That's how big the gap it's is, isn't big. it? I mean, we're, we're talking about an eight-year, nine-year journey um, from thirty-seven and, to forty, and that's where the change six. happens. And um, and so I, I think what you have to do is you have to be able to to, to look at yourself and what you uh, what you did or didn't do, and and then go go to work, um, go to work on yourself, work on your coaching craft, take the time to be able to develop that. Um, I've spoken to Jared before about it as well, and there is moments when it sort of felt like it wasn't going to happen, um, and then you know this opportunity comes up and it come up quite late, and um, and now I'm sitting here as the the coach of Carlton and, and looking forward to. To taking on round one. The modern magnitude of the job, which uh, is graphic, there are great pieces written across the weekend about the love-hate relationship mm -hmm. with the job and then the Coaches Association survey. What, what's your perspective on the position of the head coach coming into a 2022 season? Is there any part of you that dreads it starting as much as you're, you're totally up for it? I think you get to the point you can't wait for it to start <laughs> um, because you've sort of been working at this plan, you want to get it all in, into and seeing it, seeing it live in games of footy. But as the season goes on, then there's the win-loss, the performance, the scrutiny, the pressure, the stress that comes with performance. And, um, you know, it is a big job, um, but it's a job that you learn to deal with as you're, you're in the job. But, um, you know, there's been a lot of chat around the love of the game, you know, the, the stress and demands of the game. But as a coaching, um, we're very privileged to be in the position we're in. Um, and it's one thing that I've learned in the last four years, it's to, to love the game and love what you do. And, um, you know, the enormity of the job is such, it is, a, it is a big job, but as I said, it's about really loving what you do. So is there anything that can be done? Or is there just, it strikes me, this is just the cold reality of it. And you sign up as best you can and, and endure as best you can. I think there's lots that can be done. You know, I think sometimes as coaches, um, we need to have some things taken away from us. I think we can mandate leave as one thing. You know, we were really fortunate when we came out of Perth, we gave our coaches and all our staff uh, an eight week break, uh, as big a break as we could possibly give them because in the last two years, we've had a really big COVID interrupted period. We've asked for a lot of sacrifices from staff and people, coaches included, um, and to give people the breaks required to mentally refresh, to give themselves to the game. And, um, you know, we need to make sure we have the resources in the game, in the departments to help fund the development of the game and make sure our product of our game is really viable. And we probably haven't quite got that balance right. So there are things that we can do to help the game, help the stress and the demands of the game. And I'm sure we'll find that balance in the next two or three years. Have you still got a little bit of child in you, Vossi and Goody? Like, in two nights' time, there's going to be 80,000 of the G. You've won grand finals, mate. You've won everything the game's given you. You've experienced the times. Walking up the race on Thursday night, coaching the Carlton Football mm. Club, wh what are you expecting? Are you going to be, oh, I've done this before, or <laughs> there's going to be, wow, it's good to be back. It's good to be back. Yeah, I think it'll certainly have a lot of that. Um, I, I, look, I think at the core of what we do is that we love the game. That's that's at the core of it. What's also at the core, to, core of it is that we're competitors. Um, and that thrill of being able to turn up at the start, knowing you know the exhilaration of a win and maybe a devastation of a loss, um, that's sort of what br keeps bringing us back. And um, and so I guess probably sitting there for the first time and walking up to the chair for the first time, and hopefully there's 80, 85,000. I might take that first, uh, <laughs> you know, 10 seconds just to be able to take that moment in. And um, and I'm and I'm really looking forward to it. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be a fantastic, uh, fantastic game. So. Lee Matthews is a terrible barometer for this because when you're the greatest player of all time, of course, your <laughs> playing was easy. What was the phenomenon of coaching the Premiership like as against having played in them? Yeah, it was different. I think the euphoria as a player is just the highest level it can possibly be. You're out on the ground, you're having an impact, you're doing it with, you know, 22 of your closest mates, you know, that you've been working incredibly hard with. As a coach, um, your mind, it's a very fulfilling experience because it's a bigger plan, it's bigger than yourself, um, it's for a lot of other people and there's been a lot of people that have impact to build the club to have the success that it needs to have and your mind goes back to those people that really started that journey, you know, back in the two th 2013 when the club was at its, at its bottom of where it's been and 
Um, it takes a lot of people to build a footy club and a lot of good decisions need to be made and um, your mind goes to a lot of those people. Well done. Melbourne handled the success superbly. It was such a joyous... Wasn't it? I, it was I, beautiful. It was. It was so joyous to... Well, I'm on the character, so I'm at home watching you <laughs> on the couch going, good on you, Goody. Yeah. And to see all these young men enjoy this moment, it was just... It was fantastic. And when you got the coach again, I thought, oh, this is great. <laughs> Mossy's back in it, so good luck. Have uh, a great year, mate. Yeah, thanks, Robert. We've got, got some specific questions about round one for each of you, and I know there's a great story brewing at Carlton, so we'll share with that with you in a moment's time. Tomorrow night at selection in round one, some careers are started, some careers resume. Is Sam Doherty going to be part of Thursday night? Yes, he will be. Yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, incredible story, Jared. As you said, I um, one of the one of the first things that I did when I was appointed was um, go around and, and visit Doc, and um, and he was in treatment at that particular time, and um, sat on the park bench um, and uh, just talked about life and just talking about where he was at and what he wanted to do, and um, and uh, he, he said, oh, I want to play round one. And I, I just I couldn't believe that he was actually even thinking about that, and um, tried to give him some encouragement. But I was thinking, oh, this this would be remarkable if he can do that, and and here he is. So it sort of really is testament to to the person and how resilient he is, and just how determined he is. So how emotional was that today at the club when when you were able to announce it? Yeah, the boys were, were pretty happy. Um, so it just, just to be able to sort of first deliver the news to him and um, that he was going to play and he's fought so hard. We've had a lot of chats over the, over the pre-season and um, to see him fit, healthy um, and walking out there um, for round one just seems right. Uh, it just really seems right. It wouldn't seem right not launching this new journey um, without him, um, but it's, it's all him. Um, you know, as you can see, just his uh, you know, power and strength and... Been able to return back to, to his playing weight and um, he puts himself in a position to play. So um, it'll be, I know the boys will really love walking out there with him. So, Dr. Sard and Williams in the back half? Well, that's the most likely. No. Uh, Jerry, with that team's been in the right now. So, um, it's going to yeah, make it a pretty I'll speedy figure, back six. I'll figure it? at some stage throughout the season, I'm sure. <laughs> so, can I, do you marvel at what he's been able to do from, from the man that you first met on the park bench? Oh, it, it really is incredible. Um, you know, at the time he'd lost a, a heap of weight. Um, you know, obviously he was, uh, he was in full treatment. Um, and to sort of see his steady progression um, was, was quite amazing. And it wasn't all smooth sailing. I mean, he's had some hiccups along the way, but he persisted through it and he kept going. And, um, you know, and, and he's been able to get this body of work in that's puts him in a position to do it. I mean, we wouldn't at any, in any way be putting him out there with, uh, with any risk whatsoever. So that just sort of shows how ready he is to, to be able to um, play round one. On Wednesday night, so each grand final pairing ends up with their own dynamic, one way or another. Do you are you sort of braced for a jilted Bulldogs on Wednesday night? Oh, we're braced for a Bulldogs at their best. You know, we've got enormous respect for their footy club and what they were able to achieve last year. And you know, I think throughout the year we built uh, we built some really good rivalry. In you know, I think we played them three times throughout the season, including the JLT series and. Um, you know, all the games were highly competitive and, and um, we're expecting no different come Wednesday night. It's an exciting way to start the season. You know, the last game of the season was Melbourne v the Bulldogs and we start the season again that way, so it's an exciting time. Would you be disappointed if they felt disrespected by Melbourne in, in your moment of triumph? Yeah, so I'm not... I don't get uh, too consumed with how opposition feel. Um, by no means, are you talking about the song? Was that what you... I guess so, yeah. yeah. Just, just a few underline and, you know, they went as well as the horse did. And... Yeah, look, by, by no stretch of the imagination were we trying to disrespect anyone. That was part of a 25-song celebration hit that went on for a couple of days, but... Um, yeah, that's a song that's sung by the Australian Test cricket team. It's sung by um, teams all around the world, and um, there was no, you know, by no means was that a song that was meant to disrespect the Bulldogs. It was a, a song of celebration. How are your players going to go with um, not showing dissent or abuse towards umpires? <laughs> <laughs> you both live uh, this well, one quite well and one well, not so much. Yeah. We had some good learnings, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't think I'm the right person necessarily to share wisdom on how to go about that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, look, this is the this is the environment we're in. Um, you know, we have to adapt within it. 
um, you know, it's, it was quite clear the other night, Goody, that yeah. uh, there was going to be a stance taken and, and that's the stance we have to follow. So the best we can possibly do is just ensure that uh, we coach the players correctly and we ensure they stay in what they can control as opposed to what they can't. But it's not a wrong decision what the AFL's done, is it, Goody? It's, it, it's, it's, is it correct in your mind? Yeah, no, it's the right decision because we're role models for community footy and we need to make sure we're seen that way. And I think what you saw, I think it was a, a great example in our game and how quickly clubs can adapt to, to new rules and uh, we learn our lesson the hard way. But the players will adapt really quickly. They'll, they'll adjust the new interpretations, the new rules in the game. And we play a really important part in, in footy to role model what we want in our community sport. Christian was bleeding here last yes. Wednesday. <laughs> it wasn't me, it wasn't me. That was the first thing he came up to me and said, it's not me, coach. <laughs> uh, but I think that's the general consensus across yes. um, everyone in, in, in AFL clubs is that uh, the priority is ensuring that um, that the umpires can go about their business and... That uh, the game flourishes. Uh, uh, the whole uh, game. Absolutely. And, I, and no, one, the no one's against that. The top-up list will be revealed tomorrow. H have you, re have you uh, restarted a, or potentially restarted a career or two here? Yeah, I think we have. I think our recruiters have gone and looked at, you know, guys who've recently retired and... Uh, next minute, we've got our welfare officer, Reese Conker, that's uh, starting to strut around the club <laughs> thinking he's going to get a game <laughs> soon. But, uh, you know, there's going to be some, you know, some obviously some contingencies in place for all clubs, and they're looking at players around the whole league, but obviously it's got to come within your list at Casey. So, um, you know, hopefully we never get to that situation, but it's one that we've got to plan for. It feels like we might be there straight away with West Coast. You wouldn't envy Adam Simpson this little period, would you? No, and I guess we always knew there was a risk somewhat. And, and obviously WA have been, WA been quite different circumstances to, to where we are right now. And um, with their borders opening up, that does present um, some problems. But, you know, I guess within... Um, within inside the footy clubs, we are sort of putting those plans in place and, and just making sure that if something does happen, that at least we're we're prepared for it. All right. Um, I, don't, I didn't know it was. I thought you were going. You didn't have another last segment. So what I said previously, <laughs> just say it again, okay? Just the Good last luck. One. Just, will the players be able to be at the flag unfurling? How do your times work out? No, they don't quite work out yep. for the players to be out there and. Um, that's a good thing. You know, our focus is on the game and the game at hand, but this is really for the supporters, it's for the past players, it's for everyone to get in and embrace, and, and, and so they should. 6.35, so 35 minutes before the opening siren. Best of luck to you both. Great to see Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks good luck. Well Simon, Simon, Goody. Simon Goodwin with us. Players' night, that's Tuesday. Jack Revolt takes up with us again throughout this season, and we introduce a Brownlow medalist. Lockie Neal makes his first appearance on Players' Night.